let's get into a review of Evil Dead Rise so I can start grating some cheese or some human flesh. Let's get into it. Well, sometimes that is better. All right, so before we start talking about the movie, I do want to talk a little bit about the premiere where we had a surprise visit from Bruce Campbell before the screening. It was insane. Got to talk about it a little bit. Now, a lot of people have been asking, how the heck did you see Evil Dead Rise early? Well, this literally came out of absolutely nowhere. My buddy Sean from Zom Leader Studios hit me up and some of my buddies and was we were all going to Horror Hound anyways, and it had gotten announced that there was an early screening of this movie Thursday before Horror Hound Weekend actually got going. So he sends that to like me and my buddies in our group chat, like literally the day before the tickets go out there. They were free tickets, but you had to get them in this small little window. So me and my buddies, we got tickets right when they dropped. It was like perfect timing. We, ju we just barely got them. So flash forward to Thursday night then. We drive all the way down to Cincinnati. It's like a three and a half hour drive. No big sweat. We talked about horror movies the whole way down. It was fun. But we pull up to this really tiny like Esquire theater. It looks like the theater that the original Evil Dead premiered in, which was kind of perfect in a weird way. I don't know. I was, I was really digging the vibes of this mini little theater. It wasn't like a big brand name or anything. Maybe Esquire is that, but we don't have those up here in Cleveland. Apparently we have them down in Cincinnati though. We pull up, there's a line all the way around the building, like literally down the way into this like dark alley. And I'm like, oh my God, we have to get in line now. We're not going to get in. You know, it was like once, once the theater fills up and it's at capacity, they're done. You know, they're not letting anybody else in. So we get out of the car as fast as possible. My buddy drives down the street and like goes and parks somewhere and we get in line and Brandon from I Like Scary is standing like right there in front of us. I'm like, oh, what's up, Brandon? How's it going? And I, you know, we recognized each other. We had met each other at uh, Halloween Horror Nights the year before, too. That guy's great. I hear he has his Evil Dead Rise review out, too. So make sure to check that out as well. But we're standing in the rain for a little over an hour. You know, I would have preferred Blood Rain before an Evil Dead movie. But I'll take regular rain. You know, it's still pretty spooky. And I'm kind of just not paying attention. You know, I'm just thinking about Evil Dead Rise. I'm super excited. I'm getting pelted with cold rain. So I'm kind of just like this. And then Brandon starts calling my name. He's like, Jake. Jake, oh my God. And I'm like, what? What, what? what is it, Brandon? He's like, dude, David Howard Thornton just walked into the theater. And I'm like, what? Art the Clown is going to watch Evil Dead Rise with us? Holy sh**. So finally, they let us into the theater with Art the Clown and also Spencer from Ice Nine Kills was there. We finally get in there. And then literally as my buddy Sean is walking in, he's the last person they let in. They cut everybody else off from the line. And I felt so bad, but I was also like, thank God. <laughs> we all scrambled for seats. None of us got to sit next to each other. I didn't care. Like, I was just like, I, I'm so excited to see this movie. I'm defending this seat with my life. I didn't see where David Howard Thornton went, but he like literally walked right past me and then like sat in a, in a seat, like very close to me on the other side of the row. And I'm just like, oh my God, I'm going to watch Evil Dead Rise with Art the clown let's go <laughs> but the biggest surprise of the night came when bruce campbell actually came into the theater and like did a little q a beforehand kind of presented the movie talked a little bit about making it it was really cool he roasted me for stuttering when i tried to ask him a question and he also roasted some kids who were going absolutely ape sh it was fun hilarious. The coolest part of all that to me though was before the movie he was walking around with these bags full of candies and they also had these little cheese graters in them and then when he got to me I just I had to say something like something that Bruce would respond to and unfortunately the only thing my mind could think of was I love cheese. He hears that he looks at me and he's just like you like cheese, huh? And then he gave me one of those bad boys, so I will literally never wash this cheese grater. <laughs> but it was an amazing weekend overall, though. I met some really cool people between, like, people who recognized me out of nowhere, which was awesome, and then also, like, Matthew Lillard, Giancarlo Esposito, Jonah Ray from Mystery Science Theater was just hanging out with us at one point. It was a really fun time overall, probably one of the best weekends I've ever had. So thank you all for being a part of it. Everyone who said hello to me was super nice, too. So thank you all so much. I, I really appreciate it. All right, but let's talk about the damn movie. That's why you're here. You don't care about my stupid stories. Let's talk about Evil Dead Rise, spoiler free. Overall, this was a terrific entry that serves as a love letter to specifically Evil Dead 2. Kind of like how Evil Dead 2013 is to the original film. This is kind of that to Evil Dead 2. It has a, like a touch of camp to it, which was really surprising, but is very scary at the same time. I definitely know which Evil Dead movie is Lee Cronin's favorite. The attention to detail is amazing. There's little things you might miss that are like a direct reference to like Army of Darkness, or Evil Dead 2. A pizza comes into play, for instance, at one point, and it says Henrietta's on it, which is really cool. It's a really nice little Easter egg. That's not a spoiler, by the way. That's not a spoiler. That's a detail. Come on. But like I said, the camp was very unexpected, but worked really well because it was done in doses. It wasn't like the whole movie is like super campy. It's not like Army of Darkness level camp. It's like how Evil Dead 2 is, where it's just in spots. And that's the best way to do camp, in, in my opinion, at least. There's one kill in particular that will make Evil Dead 2 fans come in their pants. This movie also has 
has some balls, too. I've seen some other movies lately that maybe don't have too many testicles, and I appreciated that this one had three. Like I said, just because it's campy, it doesn't mean it's not vicious. Oh my god. <laughs> it exceeded my expectations tenfold. I really only have, like, a tiny criticism about the film, and that's that I think the structure of the very beginning and the very ending is a little weird. I think when you see it, you'll kind of know what I'm talking about. Personally, I would have moved something around certain places. I can't really talk about that more without spoiling it, but overall, this is still a damn near perfect sequel. All of the characters were really phenomenal, too. I hate how horror movies nowadays have to have, like, a hundred characters. This is, a, once again, just a small, confined story that's done really well. It's a tight script. There's nothing where it's like, that doesn't make any sense. Unless you've never seen an Evil Dead film, in which case you might be confused by some of the plot points. People were criticizing things about Scream 6 that the franchise has done multiple times before in the past, and they're like, why would Scream 6 do that? That's crazy! There is stuff like that in this movie, but it's all like Evil Dead tropes. Like, it's stuff to be expected from an Evil Dead sequel. So if you're gonna take issue with that, I, once again, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I, that none of that bothered me personally. One of the big reasons I'm constantly lobbying for horror to get like smaller and do these more contained stories is because you can do a lot more with your characters that way. This movie really only has like five main characters where you can really just immediately connect to them because you spend so much time with them right at the beginning. I think every character also has a big standout moment and they're all portrayed excellently by their respective actors and actresses. Alyssa Sutherland plays one of my all-time favorite deadites. Open up now. Nothing that a hug and a kiss won't fix from you, baby. Like, oh my god, dude. You know how, like, when you're watching a movie finally and you see something from the trailer and you're like, okay, you know, I already saw that. Let's get moving. It's not, it doesn't hit as hard because you've already seen it. That's not the case for Evil Dead Rise. That whole sequence with the little girl and the mom is so effectively terrifying. Ugh. I was like petrified at that sequence. I was like sitting there shaking, man. I was like, oh my God, this is happening on screen. Art the Clown is sitting right in front of me. Oh my God, I can't take it, man. But seriously, getting back on track, Alyssa Sutherland is so effectively creepy and serves as the driving force of horror in this film. She's kind of the Cheryl of this movie. Instead of a cellar door she's hidden under, she's at the front door of the apartment. Lily Sullivan as Beth plays an ex excellent final girl too, who actually kind of gives Mia from Evil Dead 2013 a run for her money. I remember when I first saw the trailer, I was thinking to myself, man, this Beth character is basically just Mia from the Evil Dead. Like, I really hope they have her, you know, kind of stand on her, on her own, be her own character. And I think they effectively do that. I can't really say why yet. I feel like that's maybe getting into spoiler territory, but she is a guitar tech, which I think is a really cool character attribute. And she's also not addicted to drugs. So it's, it's a different character for sure. Gabriel Eccles is Bridget and Morgan Davies is Danny kill it here by immediately being sympathetic characters. There are some wonderful moments with them right at the beginning that have you rooting for the whole family. This is of the utmost importance in a movie like this where you gotta just immediately be rooting for these characters or the whole thing falls flat. And I think all of these actors and actresses do that effectively well. Like, I really was rooting for all of them from the get-go. There was nobody I disliked and they did that really well. Some of the other tenants in the apartment I disliked but that's done on purpose. And Nell Fisher is so sweet. She is the absolute heart of this movie which is really surprising in an Evil Dead film. That actress has a very bright future ahead of her. Another thing I really liked about this film is the pacing is lightning fast. Like, not just fast, it's lightning. I mean, it's boom, 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 boom. We're moving, we're moving, we're moving. This movie never feels slow. Like, you are never like, okay, you know, let's go. Let's get to the action. You know what I mean? Like, it takes just the right amount of time with the exposition, and then bam, we get right into it, and then here we go. This movie felt like it was only, like, 15 minutes, but it's way over 90 minutes, which is insane to me. Like, I checked the runtime afterwards. I'm like, there's no way that was longer than 90 minutes. No way, man. And it is. I love movies like that, though, that leave you wanting more, because that means it was really good. The gore is top-notch as well. Once again, no spoilers for the kills, but you will not be disappointed in that department. This sequence is, uh, it's something. Holy shit. <laughs> Just like the 2013 movie, it's very hard to watch the whole way through, but then, it, like I said, it also has these campy moments that are reminiscent of Evil Dead 2, and that kind of gets echoed through the kills at certain moments. You'll know what I'm talking about when you see it. Now, the last big thing I want to talk about is the lore. Every non-spoiler review I have seen of this movie is saying, like, they kind of mess up the lore of the Necronomicon, but, like, if you've seen Army of Darkness, they don't really do that. In fact, it's kind of perfect with the lore, how they expand upon it. All I'm gonna say is that there's something specifically in Army of Darkness, without giving away any spoilers, that makes all of this totally work. So, I don't know. Personally, I saw no issue with this. This actually kind of makes the, the mythos behind the Necronomicon more interesting because of the way they expand upon it. Overall, this movie is an easy 9.5 out of 10. Like I said, just a little bit of clunkiness with that opening and then like kind of the very ending too, but besides that, I fucking loved it. Like, it is another 
another great addition to this franchise that is probably the best horror franchise ever. Are you excited for Evil Dead Rise that comes out on April 21st, though? Leave me and Greg the Greater something in the comments below.